Hey, you want to see something funny? Do you swallow? Haha. <sighs> -ha. That's asphalt you're looking at. What is this? Is this a factory delete floor pan? No, it's over here. What this is is just a big gaping vagina rust hole. I don't know why the rest of the floor looks Arizona fresh, but this one spot here lets you know this car is from Minnesota. Maybe it's because their window was leaking and it's a possibility and it just Niagara falled its way down to here. That's one theory. I did have to reseal the window. So, I mean, yeah, that window needed to be resealed, so maybe that's a culprit. Today, we're going to cut this out and patch it. October running out of good weather days I mean it's like 70 degrees in Minnesota in October so when you're this lucky you might as well play the lottery can't guarantee how long it's gonna last like this so probably about another week or two of this so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut off the bad shit I got some metal in the garage I'm gonna just bend it to fit sheet metal screw it then get some like uh you know, seam sealer, whatever. Something that goes into a caulking gun just to make it so the water doesn't go through. Lay some carpet over it, and that'll just get me through the winter. I mean, if I found this car in the middle of summer, I'd take my sweet ass time and do a more professional job. But I'm just gonna lay a pretty decent band aid over it just to get me through the winter. I'll even get some carpet for it. Because it's the shag, I'll just get some house carpet and just, if it ain't blue, I'll rattle bomb it blue. So I'll just blend in. You know, I'm lucky enough that at least this is just on the floor. I mean, it's not on it's not on the hump or anything awkward. So it's just a big square I got to cut out and drop in a square shaped object to go over and sheet metal screw it in. It's a relatively straightforward, you know, thing. The rest of the car is rock solid. You know, it's granite solid. You know, it's weird over there, over there, over there. Everywhere over there and under the frame, the frame itself, it's all fucking good. It's just this one spot. So for now, it's gonna look like this. We're gonna start cutting and chopping. Now that we made the hole bigger, I'm just gonna pure 15 it quick. Got just enough to fill up a, a jar cap. You know, brush it all on, top both sides. You know, let that sit and just patch it over. Alright, now I got the Pure 15 laid up in there. It's just curing right now. It's going to take a few hours. It's not, looking, it's not looking too bad. The Pure 15 is in. Should take about a day to cure. I wasn't originally going to go this route, but I said fuck it, you know. The weather's good enough to lay it on there, so I might as well get it over with. And I had just enough in the can just to do this. One less thing to do in the spring. I can change my mind quickly if I wanted to. Usually with old cars, not everything goes to plan, so I was going to slap a piece of metal on there, seal it, and put some carpet over and say, fuck it. But, you know what? The weather's good enough to lay it on some PR-15. So I'll do that. I'll do the metal part tomorrow. I'm going to let the rest of the day, you know, devoted to the PR-15 to cure. And I did the underside too, so it's all sandwiched in. And this metal is, you know, saved. And I also, while well, I had some PR-15 left, you know, that's the stuff right there. I even did the trunk lid. The inner lip was starting to rust. Like, if you open it up, you'd hear the rust, you know, falling down to the edge. So I got just enough weight to keep it open. You know, just a crack. If I close it all the way, I'll just, you know, rub on the weather seal there. So 
So I'll just let it sit like this for a day. Now to get it on the ground and just roll it into the garage. Oh fuck, it never ends with these cars, but we're going we're getting down there on the list. Sooner it's it's more and more by every passing day becoming more of a daily driver at this point. Looking pretty good. I even did the underside too, so it's sandwiched in. Needs a day to cure. Hopefully it's a uh, exhaust proof and a uh, waterproof. When this all cures, I'm just gonna rubber mat it and carpet. Find whatever matches this texture and just rattle bomb it blue if it's not blue already. I got a floor mat to go on top of that, then this problem is fixed. Now we're on to the other gauges. I'm gonna get the uh, temp sensor from that hose into here, which I couldn't get to before because the uh, compressor was running on top of it. Kinda awkward to get at, but that's the best, uh, best spot to put a temp sensor in this motor. Or you could go by the uh, distributor and uh, that spot there. Could go there, but I'm used to going right there, so that's what we're gonna do. Need some leverage. Hopefully this is enough. Come on, get the leverage going. Okay, change angles. There we go. Now I fucking won the battle. Get back to you when I have that into there. When I check the radiator, it's up to the cap full of fluid, so when I take that setting unit out, it's going to gush coolant. So I think now it's a good time to drop the, the stuff that I poured in there to flush it out, you know, into that container and put in the good stuff while I'm doing the setting unit. Because I really want to mess that way, and the on and off dry thing I've been doing, you know, it's enough to flush out the, the coolant at least, so I'm going to drop that out, do the drain cock on the bottom. All right, here comes out the mostly watery coolant. Still kind of green, but it's more water than anything. <laughs> yeah, it has to splatter like that, don't it? We'll let it do its thing and we'll get to it with the setting unit. Well, I would be in the middle of installing my uh, temp gauge right now, but the motherfucker ate my uh, brass fitting that came off of this and went down there. Rolled down there and went under the radiator and this thing's in the way, so this thing's fucking coming out right now. Yeah, I'm done with this fucking thing eating all my shit. Gonna remove it and... Throw in the dirt. No, throw in the trash. Ah, piece of shit. Fucker was fighting me for a half hour. Ah, now I have to get to the treasure of what this thing has been eating since I've had it. Where is that fucking adapter? Ah, oh, it's somewhere. What is it? It's a surprise. Ah, my adapter. I 
Ah, I need one of those. I know where that went from. Okay. Well, might as well blow out the radiator since I'm this far unintentionally, but I had to just to get that back so I can screw it into that. Fucking A. Check this out. Knock the dust off that pussy. Yeah, it's a dust cloud. We'll keep at it till there's no more dust. Now I'm going to rig up a battery cutoff switch, both as an anti-fire and anti-theft deterrent. Just can't trust a car that sat for 22 years on its own when I walk away connected to the battery. I don't know how crispy those wires are, then check every strand. This is just for peace of mind until I can drive it long enough to know what it's doing. Just, you know, unhook it when you walk away. Take it with you. Pretty foolproof. It's gonna go and get the dash somewhere, so got eight feet of this and six feet of that. This is gonna go to there. And the other side of that connection go from here to the starter. Should be the right size. Yep. Hopefully the holes I drilled are big enough for this to slide through. Eight feet I got. Yeah, that'll fit on there. Well, I snaked the lines in the firewall. That wasn't too hard. Took the glove box out to figure out where the fuck I'm going to put that switch. And I deduced I can get my hand back behind this panel here. Like this bottom corner. So it'll look kind of like this. I'm thinking something like that. You know, just imagine, you know, that much sticking out, but right here. That's fine. So, hopefully my step drill bit's wide enough. And we'll just get the drilling. Uh, oh yeah, since I'm here. Figure where the hell the rest of my gauge is going to go because they're not going to stay right there. No fucking way. And I'm thinking right there. It's a perfect spot in between the glove box and the ashtray. Maybe like that a little bit for me to look at. Either way, it won't conflict with anything. I can open that. I can open that. You know, the switch will be down there. Tie the wires on the one side and cover around the dash and go under it. That's ampered, so I don't know if I can get away using that. I'm just get a regular voltmeter and go there instead and just keep this bracket. So we got a plan. Chopped up garden hose as a sleeve to go on the firewall because there's, you know, sharp metal. I don't want that cutting through the fucking battery line. You don't want 4th July... Showing starting in the middle of your dashboard. How about that shit? Look at the action on that. 
you know, I did something just like this a long time ago that I actually did a video of and uploaded on YouTube back in, fuck, I don't know, 2009, 2010. But that was just the power of blower motor because it sounded like a juicer back when I was dealing the 77 Cadillac. Wish I kept that video, but I lost it. I think this is the same one. You know, same, similar process. It's not connected to the wiring, of course. I just got it to fit in there. I just got to snake it up there and just connect it, and there you go. Oh, yeah, I found a garden hose. This is going to be my grommet for the firewall. You don't want these arcing out, especially on battery cables. <laughs> Fourth of July fireworks while I'm driving. So what's next? Um clean up this fucking mess. Starters. And then go hook this up. You know, mount the gauges. Well I finished the ICBM launch key. That's what I like to call it. So it looks like that on the outside. Now I took some uh, fiberglass boards. Or that plexi board. Where the fuck that shit is? I used to make the headliner my Mercury. I had some scrap pieces of that laying around. Three plied it and I uh, sandwiched it in electrical tape because behind that is, uh, you know, it's a metal bracket. You know, just extra sense of security. You don't want to encapsulate those two ends with, you know, non metal objects. I think that'll be fine. You know, you want you don't want those two touching anything metallic other than the pose that they're on. So that's all good. And a sheet metal screwed it in so it just wouldn't flop around. Now we gotta zip tie that all straight up. Oh yeah. Gotta garden hose those holes. It's grommet. And we can get some more gauges put in this the slot here because I got to go into the car and do the wire to the uh, starter and that one's got to go to the starter because that's coming from the switch and I also got to redo this that's also got to go to the switch so I got wire for that just got to assemble it all not gonna stick with that battery. I wouldn't trust that in the winter. It's not big enough. But the one of my Mercury is a top host. It's a bigger battery, so I'll just put that in the Mercury and you know switch that around. Okay, I got everything all tied up. Starter wire is all good. Alternator wire is connected. Pretty much everything's ready to go. Let's uh, hook it up quick and see what it does. That uh, should be on there enough just to see if it does anything. Okay. Nothing. That's what we want for now until we put the key in. Should it work now? Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And if something were to happen... Oh yeah, that's right. It's it's the equivalent of um, unhooking the connection to the battery by doing that. I thought that would kill the motor for a second. No, this is the attempt of just taking the connection off the battery. You know, 
the reason why it's still running because the alternator is good. But if we turn it off, and this, nothing, nada. In fact, the door is open, and that uh, opera light should be on, but it's not. No, it's on. <sighs> off, on, off, on, off. Oh, that's awesome. Looking pretty good. Starting to catch up here, making progress. I'll get a voltmeter for that eventually. These two are, well, the essential, and I'll get a tachometer here. Someplace, eventually. Put that glove box in, but I can do that later. Right now, I'm start dumping in the coolant. And I'm gonna use that hole as my guide, because I'm gonna fill it through the radiator. I'll know that, uh, Pretty much topped up when it comes out through there, and it'll also help push out the air that'll flow to the top end. Jug number two. I got three of these and one gallon of regular water in case I don't know if I need it. There we have it. The Green Lake, as I often call it. That tells me that's how high the fluid is, because water or anything liquid wants to level out. So that's where the coolant is right now. So I'm going to get some shop towels, soak that up, put the sending unit in there, and probably take, it's probably take another gallon or so just for the go all the way up and, and there and and fill out the top of the radiator. Let's say about another gallon. Oh, we're making great progress. Got new coolant in the radiator. Got the battery all bolted down. Sure there's other things. Got the gauges all mounted up. That's all in there. Oh, that's all hooked up. Now it should be, uh, should be springing to life pretty soon. There. Well, you should come on in ignition only. Yep. Just testing that being off completely. Yep. Now to figure out where to put the tachometer now. Fucking A. Whole weekend's been nothing but little nickel and dime shit. Gauge there, missing bolt here. Oh, mess everywhere. Come together at least. Well, the gauges are all in. Well, they work. No, that ain't too grand. I think it's adjusted for uh, these tachometers can go anywhere from two, uh, four to six to eight cylinder engines. Probably didn't check on the uh, eight selection, so hold on. There we go, that's about more accurate. Eight to 900 RPMs. And we are charging. Well, now I'm in the garage. It's the next day. This shit keeps on continuing. So what we're gonna do right there, you know, this is how it's been on the, it's in the back of my head since I've owned the car, is what's under the valve covers. You know, for a car that's been sitting for so damn long, you'd think you'd hear some top end noise, like the, you know, the lifters would be clattering. 
I don't hear none of that, so I don't know how to interpret it, if that's a good thing or a bad thing. So I want to just take the valve covers off to see if there's oil going up to there. Even though it says 40 to 60 PSI of oil, you can't deny that, but just for peace of mind, I wanted to make sure that the upper end is getting oil like it should. Just eliminate any paranoia and whatnot. I forgot how many bolts hold this thing down. I already took off four. There's probably one there, one there. We're probably about ten bolts, maybe. So we'll get back to you when this side's you know ready to come off, hopefully in one piece. Oh yeah. Huh. Was well, there any gas? Yeah, 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 it broke. I don't know if that's because of what I just did. I didn't feel any resistance. You know, it's to be expected of a valve cover this old. Sometimes you'll get lucky and the gas comes off in one piece. Tell you the truth, usually when they break apart like that, you can kind of feel it pulling it off. And this is like a clean break. So... Anywho, it's off. Second side is off. Looks no different than the, uh, the first side I looked at. Almost could have gotten away using the gasket, but one part broke off. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But it doesn't look any different than uh, that side. So I think what I'm going to do next is just take the shot back and vacuum out all the crud that fell into there and then just run it for like, I don't know, 30 seconds. See what it does. Slight setback. Fuel line's leaking again. This red stuff ain't that great. Probably really isn't even fuel line at all. I just got the hardware store. So I got the appropriate stuff with a much nicer fuel filter. It's metal, so I don't have to worry about the plastic cracking. So I want to get this fixed first because gas is spraying everywhere and I want to make sure this is dialed down and then I can run this thing for a little while. Looking a lot better now. So you can uh, start this motor up again. Let's see what it's all doing. Hopefully it's got enough juice to fire it up. So I want to know if there's oil coming up to the top end of this so Go find out. Everything looks okay. What it's gonna get. That's all tightened up, so. <laughs>
Okay, it's been about uh, five minutes. I'm just idling it, monitoring it for the last about five minutes or so. More oil is coming up to the top. Now it's leaking over. So oh, just a little bit right there. I want to make damn sure it's you know taking care of itself on the top end. Takes a little while, I guess. And that's where the test stops. Yep, too much oil seeping out of the headers. Mmm, steamy. Well, they're oiled, so I'm gonna have the car running for no more than 10 minutes of that, so. I'm gonna let this unbingo haul itself in this garage because it's getting fucking smoky. And I gotta get some, uh, my valve covers ready for it to be put back on. Now, they didn't have valve cover gaskets, but they had this stuff that's on a roll and you can just cut the fit, so usually you do that for differentials of odd bowler ends, but It'll work for, you know, valve covers if you want to take the time on it, so it won't be that hard. It's cork. So while that's, you know, unbingo hauling itself, I'll get that ready. Now I'm just tracing the gaskets. You wouldn't normally have to do such a thing for valve covers, but I don't want to wait. If you can make your own, so be it. Well, now we're ready to seal it up. So you want to use this in a combination with the cork gasket, whether you make it your own or you just buy it at the auto parts store. What you want to do is you take this, you apply it on here, and you place this on top of that, and that holds it in place. If you really want to get tricky with it, you take the screws, you throw them to the back there, so it's all basically assembled. So when you take it to the car, you just drop it on there and you gently screw them in, you know, however you want to do that. So, something like that. I will sandwich this on top. There, now you just basically flip it over and screw it down gently. Don't want to apply the blue stuff onto here. No, you just want the cork part on the bottom, the blue stuff on top, so. Now we'll do this one valve cover at a time. Done and done. I only made them mildly tight. You don't want to like super tight it like they're lug nuts or else you push out your all your blue stuff. Just want a medium type and let it cure and then go full on. So it looks like it's doing its shit. Oh, both sides are done now. Now let it sit and cure. It's already starting to. Give it a good hour.
Sounds pretty good. Got pressure building up. Temps rising to normal. Everything looks good. Yeah, a little bit of smoke right there. That's not from the valve cover as of now. That was the old stuff that leaked out before I resealed it. So I just burned that old stuff off as of now. Driving for a few miles, it'll just burn itself out. 